Hey, what's up guys? It's Phil. Welcome back. And today we're talking about the RevoPoint Pop 3D Scanner. This they kindly sent me to show you. Uh, let's see what all came in the kit they sent me. Uh, so here's the, the box. It actually came in a much larger box to cover the rest of this, but this had the scanner itself. It's just a very nice packaging. Uh, everything's foam. It's all very nicely produced or put together. And inside, uh, or with the kit, we got, there's a powered turntable. Uh, it's currently plugged in, but yeah, it comes with that and the power cord for that. We get the scanner itself, which is very tiny. It's, it's really portable. Uh, we got that. We got a small tripod, which extends and separates so we can stand that up for scanning purposes. Close that up. We have a cell phone adapter that connects to the tripod and then the scanner can connect to that so that you can use this with your computer or with your phone which is amazing. I was so excited about that. Okay, so that's the hardware. Uh, we also got power cords for the scanner. Uh, we have both, this is USB Type-C and USB-A. That's those. And we also got some little packages here. One of them contains this black plastic, uh, which is used to prevent other things from getting scanned. Uh, so we also got some dots, uh, little sticker dots you can put on things to help scanning. Uh, we got, let's see, let's open this up. We got some, uh, a little sample of blue tack. Uh, can't really see it, <laughs> but that's uh, for helping to stick your model to the uh, turntable or whatever you're using to help it from falling over while you scan. So that's handy. Uh, we also have a USB thumb drive, there you go, with uh, all of the uh, software. Put those away. And we also got some black rubber gloves, which I haven't opened yet. Uh, they're basically kind of like latex gloves, except they're reusable. Uh, that'll be used for holding the model while you scan so that you don't get your hand. Uh, then we got a small bust of, uh, looks like Julius Caesar. And that's everything that came in the kit. So, it's really exciting, so let's roll the intro and then start some scanning. Okay, so our first scan, we've got... Caesar, and this is the one that came with it. So I guess this is what we should do first. Pop that on there. Got my scanner set up on the tripod. And I've got my cord here. And so let's plug this in to the back. And the nice thing about this is it has these little thumb screws that Plug it in so you don't have to worry about it getting knocked out. Okay, nice and tight. Place him roughly here. And at the other end, I have a USB Type-C because my laptop works with that. If you don't have USB Type-C in your laptop or your computer, you can use the standard uh, USB-A. that in and wait for the computer to recognize it. There we go. And it says down here in the corner device is connected and now we see it on screen. So I can adjust it now and it's not quite high enough. So Let's get the box, and I'm actually going to take the box up, up 
part and put it kind of at an angle, the top at an angle so that I can put this up even higher and then I can adjust it and tilt it down. There we go, so we'll try to get the entire model in. Okay, that looks good. And now we'll start the turntable. And this turntable is a little different from the one I reviewed in the past, where this one just spins all the way around. It just keeps going until you shut it off. Uh, the one I did before, it was actually connected to the computer, and it would turn, scan, turn, scan, etc. This one will just turn it on, and it just slowly keeps going around. So, let's start capturing. Over here, we'll start a new project, and I'm going to set this to feature mode, and He's just white, so we're going to go no color for the texture. And confirm. And then hit the play button. And it starts capturing. And of course we can see it's not quite hitting the top. Uh, but, you know, once uh, we're finished going all the way around, this looks pretty good. Now we can hit the pause button. And we can lower this. Put these back together. There we go. And on there and I'm looking at the video on the left side on the top we have the actual video feed on the bottom we have the infrared and you'll notice compared to some other scanners this is using infrared so it doesn't have that crazy strobe light effect Okay, that looks pretty good. So if you're scanning someone's face, you don't have to worry about blinding them or <laughs> causing them to have seizures from this uh, strobe light in their face, which is really nice. Okay, so now we can continue scanning and it'll connect the two. So now we're picking up a little bit more than we didn't get before. Okay, that's pretty good. You can pause. And so now I'll do another one that's completely without that box and we'll go down low. I'll lower the tripod even more. And tilt it up a bit. Yeah, you can see the rest of the stuff in my garage and the tripod that the camera is sitting on. Okay. We'll go back, and at the top here we can see the uh, bar which says whether the sensor, whether the uh, scanner is too close or too far. And I find it works better when it's at like right around between too near and excellent. Okay, so we'll go right over to the excellent side. And I can see it's getting really blown out in the infrared view. So we can adjust that with uh, the gain, or we can just switch it to auto. I can find my cursor. Here we go. Uh, switch it to auto, and usually that works out pretty well. Oh, okay, so here's one thing the uh, scanner just disconnected. I don't know why. But sometimes it does that, and then it reconnects. But it's not a big deal, since it just reconnects. You, know, you only lose a minute or two of your time. There we go. Reconnected. And we'll set this to auto. OK, 
give it a second to update. There we go. Can adjust it a little bit. Okay. And we'll go back and hit play again. And we'll capture some more. And once you've captured whatever you want, you can actually adjust this while it's going and it'll just update itself. So now I can capture a little bit more that I didn't get before. Okay, now I'll pause and you can actually take him, put him on his back. So we can get under his chin and the top of his head. Adjust the camera there, and I'm watching the uh, the bar at the top to make sure he's not too near, too or too far. That looks pretty good. And we'll just hit play again. And now we got the bottom. the top of his head. Okay, let's make sure that's all good. Yep, and so now we can hit stop. And I'll hit complete. And so now it's it just created a point cloud and it's gonna fuse the point cloud uh, sections together. And that takes a few moments. We can turn off the turntable. Okay, so it's completed the fusing. Uh, it only took maybe a minute and a half or so, because uh, this is a pretty small model. So we can rotate him around and you can see, looks like I could have done a better job getting under his, his eyebrows there and under his nose. Uh, so let's actually make a mesh out of him and see how it turns out. Turn him around. I don't have my mouse here, so I have to use the trackpad. Uh, so we'll come over here and we'll hit the mesh button. And then it asks me, here's one thing with the software. It, the English is not 100% perfect, and this was a little confusing the first time I used it. It says, are you sure to fill whole? And at first I was just thinking, you know, that was like just a confirmation screen. I have to click yes every time. But what it's asking is, if do I want to fill the holes, I'll click yes. If I don't, it'll still create the mesh. It just won't fill the holes. So I'm going to say yes. And it'll do the meshing, which goes pretty quickly for a small model like this. Okay, so there he is. And it actually did a pretty good job of filling in those areas that I missed. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Oh, try to pan. Okay, I don't know if I can pan with a touchpad, but yeah, it, it looks pretty good. Yeah, let me see compared to the real model. Yeah, the, the detail isn't 100% as good as the real model. But it's pretty good. Let's look at the back of his hair. Okay. They say that it can do 0 0.3 millimeters. Now, I, I have no way of testing that, really. 
but it looks pretty good. Okay, uh, so once you're done with that, you, you just have a, a save button at the bottom. Uh, you could just export him, and we can export as. Let's see, here's oh, here's the the default folder is the program files folder, but uh, we can export as PLY, OBJ, or STL. So if you want to send it directly to a printer, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so that is our first scan. Let's look at some other ways you can scan with it. Okay, so we're all done with Caesar, and uh, so suppose uh, now we want to scan a person. Well, I don't have an extra person here, so I'll be scanning me. Uh, so we've got that. We can collapse the legs down so it makes a nice handle. And so I'm going to adjust it a little bit. There we go. Oops. Uh, there. Tighten it up. And I'm going to start a new project. And I'm going to set it to face. And I'll set it to color. Hopefully the color will come out okay. And confirm. And yeah, we've still got Caesar up there. <laughs> There's me. Okay, me against the green screen. And with face mode, it needs to be a little bit closer. So you have to get it pretty close. About, I don't know, it's about uh, maybe six inches or so. Okay, so. I'm going to take my glasses off and I'm going to hit start and I'm going to keep my face in the same position, no change of facial expressions. In fact, I'm going to do it this way so I can see the screen. Okay, so I may not have gotten my entire face, but I think I did a pretty good job getting most of it. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble because this bright light right next to me was kind of blowing out my face. But let's uh, take a look and see at the point cloud we've got. Okay, a little bit messed up there. It's uh, partly because the scanner came disconnected while I was scanning and uh, I had to wait for it to reconnect and maybe it had a little trouble uh, reconnecting the new mesh with the previous mesh. But we'll see what it did. So let's hit stop. And we'll complete. And it'll fuse the point cloud like it did before. Okay, we're finished fusing. Uh, so, let's take a look. Yeah, we still got that issue up there. Uh, but otherwise, it looks pretty good. So, I could... Let's uh, create a mesh out of it. And this time, I'm going to not fill the holes because it didn't get the entire back of my head or hair or anything. So if you're not filling the holes, it actually meshes a lot faster. OK, 
Okay, here we go. So we got our mesh, and it's actually pretty decent. Now, if I had better lighting on you know, all sides, we wouldn't have this dark area on one side. But it looks pretty good. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, now we can see it's not detailed enough to get things like uh, wrinkles on uh, the lips or like really specific wrinkles around the eyes or anything. But that looks pretty good. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. And so let's try applying the texture. You could just save it out like this as a PLY and that would use vertex point coloring. But if you want an actual texture map with a UV map, we have to come over and hit the texture button. And it'll go pretty quick. Okay, texturing completed. Let's see how it looks. That looks really nice. Zoom in a bit. So again, it's not super fine detail, like getting the, the pores and the skin and all that. But that is definitely very good. Uh, especially if you're into 3D printing. If you wanted to uh, do a quick scan of your face and use it as um, like a, a sand, you know, a <laughs> use it as a mold to model like a helmet or a mask for your face this would be perfect for that and it would still be pretty good to use like as a video game character if you wanted to uh, you know if it wasn't going to be you know too up close and you could definitely have a character I mean that close even and it would still look really good Right now, and then again, you can just go ahead and save it as uh, an OBJ and it'll have the UV map and the textures and it'll look good. And you can load it up into whatever sculpting software or game engine, whatever you want. So that's it for face scanning. There is also an option for body scanning. Um, but again, I don't have a whole person here and I can't exactly scan my whole body. But yeah, so that's how that works. Next, let's check out scanning with your phone. Okay, we're outside now. And I've got it all set up on its little mount with my phone. And I've got the uh, USB-A -A cable attached there. And that is to power the scanner with a external power, you know, power brick. Okay, plug that into the battery. So, of course, this does not come with it, so you're going to need one. Okay, and I've got my statue here, my fairy that I've scanned in many other videos. And so let's get this power on. And so uh, it's dusk now. The sun is going down, and that's important because it's an infrared uh, sensor on here. So in the daylight, when the sun is high, you're uh, not really going to get... Uh, anything out of the scanner. It just won't be able to read it. So, let me uh, start my screen capture on the phone. Okay, so we got this all set up and we're gonna start our scan. Oh, here's my neighbor's dog is barking. It's okay. Just ignore him. <laughs> so I'm looking at my settings. I'm going to set this to feature mode, it's on Wi-Fi, and you have to set up a hotspot on your phone. So if you've already got one set up, you're going to have to change your name and password. Okay, so I've got it set to save as an OBJ, and it is powered on, so let's start scanning. You can see the uh, interface, once I get connected to the hotspot, the interface looks almost exactly like it does on a PC. Okay, sometimes it takes a second for the hotspot option to pop up. Okay, 
So let's start scanning. Okay, here are the results of the fairy scan. I brought her into 3D code because I thought it was easier to see the details. But it, it looks pretty good. Uh, this, I'll be totally honest, this is the result of three days worth of scanning. <laughs> because it's in the, at dusk, you know, the sun starts to go down and it takes time to get all this scanned. So I ended up scanning in portions. Like, you know, I would scan from this angle, everything you see here. And then the next day I would come over and scan all of this and then the next day I'd finish it um, but uh, yeah and because the Sun was going down it's kind of pointless to try and capture the textures because the lighting is constantly changing so by the third day I just didn't didn't even bother uh, so I just turned off the texture scanning but uh, it looks pretty good I had a few errors uh, in the face here especially um, yeah, and there's uh, in the arm. Uh, let's see, some of this didn't even get uh, picked up, uh, as well as underneath the legs. Probably that's just because I couldn't get down underneath. But uh, yeah, so if I put her up on a table or something, it would be easier to get in there. Um, didn't capture some of this, so when I uh, made the mesh, it closed it up and made it smooth. So at least it's something. And we did get a few little holes, uh, some in here too. But yeah, so I think it looks pretty good overall. Okay, so that's my look at the RevoPoint uh, 3D scanner, the RevoPoint Pop 3D scanner. Um, overall, I think it's pretty good for the price. Uh, the price is currently $549 for just the scanner itself or to get the full kit with the turntable and the phone adapter as a $619. So if I wanted to uh, scan a character or scan a person to use in like a motion picture with a really high quality like down to their pores, uh, I would not use this. But for a lot of other purposes, I do really like it especially for the convenience factor that it does not have to be hooked up to a desktop computer. The other two scanners that I reviewed had to be hooked up to something with an NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, actually, the first one had to be NVIDIA. The other one uh, didn't have to be, but it had to have a high amount of video RAM, which my laptop does not have. This one was able to work with my laptop and even better my phone. So, yeah, this for convenience, I really think that this is a good value. So, uh, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Please leave a like and subscribe. And, yeah, I'll see you next time.